three light brothers stop swearing on all these people, places, and things, and all these religious formulas, thinking that as long as you don't mention Yahweh's name, you can do business dishonestly, you can conduct your life dishonestly, you're not bound to your word, you said you'd pay him back 10000 but hey, but guess what, there's good news, you didn't use Yahweh's name, you swore by the temple, you're free. Yeshua says, Israel, it's never right to lie. It's never right to mislead. It's never right to do to be dishonest. And the Aramaic, Yahshua says, do not swear falsely. He doesn't say, do not swear, like he does allegedly in the Greek. He doesn't say that. He says, do not swear falsely. James says, Yaakov says, listen, Condemnation will come to anyone who swears on any oath that's not yes in Yahweh's name, no in Yahweh's name. If you're not swearing the right way, you will receive condemnation. If you're not swearing the right way, you're not Israel. Can this be any simpler? Look at it. If you're not swearing, if you're not taking your promises and your oaths, Swearing by Yahweh's name, you're not Israel. That's how radical this is. My mother told me never to swear. My pastor told me never to swear to God. But the Torah is the opposite. This is so radical that Yeshua had to come to teach the, the leaders of Jewish Israel that not only were they, they were violating two mitzvahs, right? You shall, not, you shall not take Yahweh's name in vain, which means what? bring it to nothing, they were violating that, and they were also violating by taking oaths that were not in Yahweh's name, they were guilty of violating two mitzvahs. Does anyone listen to that? Am I talking to myself? Am I preaching to the choir? Oh, you are the choir. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. In other words, Torah commands Yisraelites, which is us, Nazarene Yisrael, to vow our oaths to Yahweh, but religion may not. Now, I want to read you something from Sirach. Ben Sirach. How many have a nice Catholic Bible at home? Known as the Douay version. Um, ben Sirach was a Hebraic book in between the testamental periods of the, of the First and Second Covenant. You'll find that listed in your Catholic Bibles, which I hope no one has, but just don't, oh, didn't say that. Just in case you have one, you'll find it. What are you laughing about? I got one. You got one? <laughs> Stone him. It's <laughs> Yahweh. Um, I will forgive you. It's Yahweh. Pardon. Pardon. Um, it's listed as Ecclesiasticus. You ever see that book? Ecclesiasticus, that's Ben Sirach in the actual Hebrew. It was written by a man named Ben Sirach, and the Catholics call it Ecclesiasticus. Don't ask me about the Kus part, I'm not even going. <laughs> it says in, in Ben Sirach 23:11, listen to this. A man who often swears in Yahweh's name heaps up obligations, meaning you're a blind. The scourge will never be far from his house. If he swears, in Yahweh's name, of course, as an Israelite, if he swears in error, he incurs guilt. If he neglects his obligation, his sin is doubly great. If he swears without reason, he cannot be found just, and all his house will suffer affliction. I'll read that again because you're shaking your head, but you didn't get anything. A man who swears, talk about the proper way in Yahweh's name, heaps upon himself what? Obligation, meaning it's binding. If you swear in Yahweh's name, as the Israelite, it's binding. The scourge will never be far from his house if you don't live up to it. The obligation. If you swear in error, he incurs guilt. If he neglects his obligation or his oath, his sin is doubly great. If he swears without reason, he cannot be found just and all his house will suffer affliction. Meaning, we learn from Sirach 2311 that we as Nazarene Israelites must, number one, unlearn our fear of swearing in Yahweh, the Creator, the Almighty's name. And we must begin to swear only according to Torah, lest we neglect one of the Torah mitzvot that he has commanded us. 
But on the other hand, listen, on the other hand, swearing should never be a habit. Did you get that? Swearing should never be a habit. You should not use Yahweh's name in an oath four times a day. It should never be a habit because according to Sirach, you, if you neglect the obligation, your sin is great. And if you swear without reason, you will never be found justified. So there are certain constraints to the oaths in Yahweh's name that we are to take. On one hand, we should not do like our Jewish brothers do, and what? Neglect taking the oath in Yahweh's name. We must not neglect the oath like our Jewish brothers or come up with some other formula. I swear by, you know, New Orleans. I swear by Redwood, California. I swear on my mother's grave. I swear on grandma's, uh, you know, gold, gold dishes. We, can't, we must not do that. We must start swearing in Yahweh's name. But on the other hand, it should never be habitual, and it should only be used, listen, very carefully, when necessary to establish your innocence or your trustworthiness in your character and integrity. Amen. Write it down. The only time we as Israel are to swear is, well, I'm Ephraim, and I'm going to show you, I swear to Yahweh. Ha ha. See, I'm Ephraim. I proved it. Because you religious guy can't swear in Yahweh's name. No. No. That's abusing the truth. We are only, listen, to swear in Yahweh's name. When it is necessary, and it is sometimes necessary daily, especially some of the places you guys work at. You get accused, you steal this, and he did this, and she said this, and your boss calls you in and goes, well, did you, did you, did you take her phone? Did you steal her paycheck? Did you, did, you, did you interrupt her? Were you loud when she was on the phone? How many know what I'm talking about? Oh, y'all work on the road? Well, pardon me for interrupting your party. So when it's necessary to defend your integrity or to establish your innocence, then and only then when your trustworthiness and character are at stake. Someone in the congregation accuses you. Someone in the congregation falsely accuses you. Someone in the congregation slanders you or lies about you or is vicious about you or is gossiping about you. And the rabbi or the elders or whoever calls you in. In order to establish your innocence, you say, you swear by Yahweh's name because once you swear by Yahweh's name, you are eternally bound to tell the truth. Till the day you die. When you swear in Yahweh's name, you're showing the elders, the rabbi, or, or the big dean, whoever's questioning you, that you are above integrity and that you are putting a curse of death on you if you're lying. When you uh, invoke Yahweh's name in a binding oath, you're saying, if I'm lying, may the curse of Yahweh be upon me. Because Yahweh's name is invoked only to protect my innocence, only to establish my righteousness, only to establish my integrity. So I have my last resort, Rabbi. You know, you caught me with the drugs, you caught me with that, you caught me with this, you did. This is my last resort. It wasn't me. This is my last in, I swear I invoke Yahweh's name, knowing that if I'm lying to mislead you, I'm speaking a curse of death, a capital offense on myself. So we learn from Sirach 2311, I'll, I'll say it again, it's very important. If we swear by mistake, even by mistake, using Yahweh's name, we incur guilt, the guilt of a curse. If we swear by Yahweh's name to perform an obligation, but we don't follow through on the obligation, our sin is also great. If we swear and our innocence and integrity is not at stake, we just got into a bad habit, Yahweh says that that person will not be found just and will suffer affliction. Make sense? So even if I didn't do it on purpose, but I, 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 I invoked it out of habit, Okay, because I got used to it. Yahweh says we will not be justified and we in our home shall suffer affliction. Does this make any sense? Oh yes. Amen. In other words, it's like the word Yahweh says. Let your moderation be known to all men. When you must defend your innocence and your integrity and your character and there's no witnesses, it's your word against his, it's her word against yours, you must 
show Israel. And every every big game in Israel must honor your oath. Meaning you're not playing games. You know you could die if you're swearing falsely. You know the Yahweh may cut your life short or put sickness on you. If you're lying, like you did on David's child, because David was lying and was in an adulterous relationship with Bathsheba, saying, look, I am not scared of the consequences of Yahweh because I have no witnesses on my behalf, but before Yahweh, I know I'm telling the truth. That's when you pull that oath out. You don't just go around and say, well, I'm not in the church anymore, so I'll just keep swearing four times a day and by Yahweh to show how cool it is. Because I'm, I'm not scared of Yahweh, you know. Grandma told me I should be scared to swear to God, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not scared, so, so, no, no, no. Because Yahweh says he will not justify those who habitually swear by his name, even if they're telling the truth. Meaning, sweetheart, darling, honey, but where did you put the peanut butter? I didn't take it, honey. Yes, you did. I put it right on that shelf. That wasn't just peanut butter, that was Jiffy. <laughs> that, that, that wasn't just peanut butter. That was Amway peanut butter. And that, and that thing cost me $49.99. But they tell me the nuts are more potent. You took my fuller brush. That's just not a Walgreens hairbrush. That's fuller brush, as in full pocket money out window. How dare you move my fuller brush. Sweetheart, I swear to Yahweh I didn't take your brush or your peanut butter. Oh my goodness, you shouldn't be swearing about such a mundane situation. You understand? That's a mundane situation. It's a minor situation. The only time you want to swear in Yahweh's name is to protect your character from defamation and when you're an innocent person being falsely about witness. And in front of a judge, even in a secular court, the name of Yahweh is so powerful, he'll, I shouldn't say it, I was going to say it, but I won't say it, but I thought about saying it, but I could have said it, and if I said it, I'll be in trouble and I'll regret saying it. So I won't say it. But that old Jewish judge on the bench or that woman bench that first day in court, when you say, I'm taking my oath in the name of Yahweh, she'll keel over because right in that court it says, in gold we trust. They don't know Yahweh. They know gold, but you bring Yahweh into that courtroom, you're gonna have, they, they, they're going to get slain in the spirit. Judge, are you all right? I tell you, you fell backwards and forwards. I thought you didn't believe in the gifts of the spirit. Trust me, you, when you swear in Yahweh's name, even in the secular court, that judge is going down in the ruler. Judge, are you still there? Is this the people's court? Where are the people? How can this be the people's court when the people are missing? Judge, you all right? So when, when your darling bride moves the peanut butter, you, that's not a reason to say, yeah, but I, I listen, I, 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 I swear to Yahweh, I didn't touch your Amway peanut butter. <laughs> now, Sirach 23.10 tells us. Listen. Sirach Ecclesiasticus 23.10. Just as a slave is under scrutiny and will not be without wealth, meaning um, punishment, sores, so one, listen, who swears continually or for no reason, habitually, by the true name, meaning Yahweh, will not remain free from sin. I'll say that again. Sirach 23.10 says, like a slave who is under constant scrutiny will not be without his punishment, his due punishment for disobeying, so one who swears continually by the true name, holy name of Yahweh will not remain free from sin. Do you understand? Even using Yahweh's name to bind yourself freely without discretion will not make you free from sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? It must be to defend your character. It must be to defend your innocence. It must be to defend your reputation. 
It must be a life and death situation where you're being accused of death when you really have nothing to do with, with death. Hey, someone's accusing you of, of, uh, of uh, Yahweh forbid, sleeping with their husband. There's no witnesses. Anybody can say anything about anybody. The, the, what devils do is they come into congregations and they put people, the men and women down, and they use these kind of sexual accusations to split congregations. He slept with my wife. He, he, when you weren't home, he came by and molested me. All right, now what do we do now? There are no witnesses. What do we do now? We put them under oath. We say, are you willing to invoke Yahweh's name that you did not do this? That you were not present? That you were not there? And if you do, and you're lying, you are under a curse of death. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? Israel has the privilege of invoking Yahweh's name, but they also have the responsibility of not abusing or lying in Yahweh's name, and not su uh, submitting to Judaism when Judaism is wrong. There are times Judaism is right. We submit to Judaism when Judaism is right. But when Judaism is wrong, we don't submit to them. The way they've got it set up, no one can swear in Yahweh's name, meaning there are no such thing as binding oaths, meaning that's violating Torah. When you're teaching the people of Israel, you can't defend your character, you can't defend your reputation, you can't defend your integrity, and, and you're breaking Torah. That leaves you in a very vulnerable position. I'm willing to swear by Yahweh's name because you accused me of sexual misconduct. That's my last resort. I have no witnesses. And now the Jewish people are telling me that no one can say the name of Yahweh. You see how evil? You see how, how, how decrepit a doctrine that is? Yahweh gave me his name to take an oath to defend myself, and the Jewish leaders are telling me I have to say Hashem. You, you see what I'm saying here? You know, it's like, well, I love Miami Beach, and I love Bnei Yeshua Synagogue, but it's all that Yahweh business. Why can't we ever say Lord? Why can't, I mean, you, you know, that place goes to like an extreme. Yeah, because that's your defense of honesty and integrity. And you're, and you're told you can't even use that. How are you going to defend yourself when there are no witnesses? Polygraph, even a polygraph is not admissible in court, let alone a big game, a religious court. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So discretion must be used. We invoke Yahweh's name in an oath, again, very important, to establish innocence, trustworthiness, integrity, lest our character and our life and our reputation, everything we work for, be permanently defamed. If we habitually swear in Yahweh's name, we will not be justified, and we will still be guilty, as if we swear falsely in his name. What's the difference in swearing by Yerushalayim or by the Beit HaMikdash and swearing falsely in Yahweh's name? What's the difference? It's the same thing, right? If I swear falsely, if I, if I swear in Yahweh's name, but I'm lying, and I speak a curse of death on myself, or I say, well, <laughs> I'm going to protect myself. I'm not going to swear on Yahweh's name. I, 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 I'll swear by the Statue of Liberty. Or I'll swear on my mother's grave. Or on my father's business. I swear on my mother's life. I do that all the time as an ignorant kid growing up in New York. I swear on my mother's life. My mother was there, she'd say, what business do you have giving my life away or, 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 or endangering my life? Come on. Was that a home run or a triple? Well, I don't know. It, did it pass the third sewer or the fourth sewer? Well, I don't know. Now, the batter says that the ball was hit and passed the third suit. Triple. The other guy on the other team said, no, the ball didn't pass the, trip the third suit. It only passed the double suit. And then the guy in the field who's hot and wants to come into the dugout says, I swear, I swear on my father's life. But doing that is the same thing as swearing by Yahweh and lying. You understand? But when we do it right, it protects us and it manifests to the world that we are Israel. You think about what I'm telling you. How can the father say, swear in, in your oath only in Yahweh's name, and send his son and go, um, uh, Yeshua, I, I, I was having a bad hair day. Can you please fix this for me? And, and make sure you speak in Greek. Don't speak in Aramaic or Hebrew. Make sure you speak in Greek and say, you heard that Abba Jehovah said, you shall swear only in the name of Yahweh. But I say to you, because <laughs> I'm, I'm sent to start the Gentile church. 
So don't swear at all. If that's what the scriptures teach, we might as well investigate Buddhism. We, we need some, because that's schizophrenia. That's not Yahweh. Oh, no. Yahweh is the same, Hebrews 13, 8. Yesterday, today, and forever, Malachi 3, 6. I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Yaakov are not consumed. It is in his immutability that we rest in. It is in his immutability that we take comfort in. It is in his immutability that we can hide ourselves under the shadow of the Most High Yah. If he commanded us to take oaths in that way, he couldn't send his son to revoke his own word. And that's what religion wants us to believe. Or that other religion, Judaism, teaches that that that, that you can't take oaths today because no one can well, if I can't take if I can't use Yahweh's name, then there's no way to defend myself. So they leave you vulnerable. How many know religion always leaves you vulnerable? Right. To error. And spiritual error is cyanide and leads to death. There is a way that I think it's in the Bible, I'm not sure. There's a way that seems right unto man, but the end of the ways thereof are the ways of death. And Yeshua was, was, was accused of being anti-Semitic because he exposed the fallacies of the Jewish leaders. So it's funny. When I'm speaking against the errors of the church, the Jews are going, come on, Rabbi, right on, brother. Don't stop now. And then when I'm teaching against the errors of the Jews, the Ephraimites are going, all right, today he's being fair. Today he's being equal. <laughs> sin is sin in either house. Yes. Yeshua the Mashiach was a stumbling block, Isaiah 8.20, to both houses of Israel. Read Isaiah 8.20. The one given as a shelter, as a sanctuary for both houses, turned out to be a stumbling block. He's telling the Christians, you better start learning how to take oaths. And he's telling the Jews, you're playing religious tiddlywinks. He's condemning the practices of both houses. I know I'm preaching to somebody today. Both houses. That's the introduction. This afternoon's message. I'll start winding down if you promise to glue those eyes. Can you glue your eyes and focus? Swear. Turn your neighbor and say focus. <laughs> what we vow, we must vow with discretion, listen, to truthfully bind ourselves to Yahweh, not to man. And the formula we use to establish these important matters must be found nowhere. Okay, Rabbi, I'm with you. Even though you told me that was the introduction, I'll just take that as a quip. Because I know you, you're full of quips. Not Q-tips, quips. Quip. Hashem <laughs> So we must, if it's true that according to the Torah, we must bind ourselves to Yahweh, then we better not do it in a religious way. Amen? Now, we were learned, we were taught never to swear to who? Never to swear to God, right? Okay, I don't swear to God, I, I, I'll just swear to Yahweh. No, that's not biblical. Now, if Yahweh wants us to swear only when, with discretion, when we, what? When our character is being questioned, assailed, or what? Brought into question. Then why would Yahweh give us the Torah of taking oaths in his name and not tell us how to make the oath? You think you can just make up your own oath? If you do, you're going to wind up doing the same things the Jewish leaders do. I swear by the temple, I swear by the altar, but I swear by the gold. This rabbi said, if you swear by the gold, it's binding. But if you swear by the temple, it's not binding. I swear by the altar, it's binding. I swear by the heavens, it's not binding. I swear by the earth, it's binding. Yeshua said, what are you, serious? The earth is his footstool, the heaven is his home, Yerushalayim is the city of the great Melech. It's never right to lie and swear falsely. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go with me, please. I lied. It's a good thing I didn't swear. I'm not closing right now. I was thinking about it. This is where you're supposed to go. Come on, Rabbi, don't stop. Come on, Rabbi, stop. Come on, Rabbi, stop. No, I'm just 
<laughs> Ruben, you enjoy life? <laughs> yes, I didn't Good. swear. Just want to make sure. I didn't swear. Devarim, that's true. 613. Devarim, 613. You shall fear Yahweh. Here's what Yeshua was talking about. You shall fear Yahweh, your Elohim. How? One way to, 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 to see that, to be to fear him. And you shall serve him, and you shall notice Deuteronomy 6.13, Devarim 6.13. You shall swear by his name. Whoa. That's not what religion taught me. That's not what religion taught me. Religion told me I shouldn't swear to God. Yahweh says, you shall fear him, you shall serve him, and part of fearing him and serving him is...